Thank you uh, for uh, Dr. Reisig for inviting me to uh, present on the topic of PCI versus cabbage for multivessel coronary artery disease. My name is Sripal Bangalore. Uh, I'm from uh, NYU School of Medicine. So these are my uh, disclosures as it uh, relates to this particular presentation. I have grant support uh, from Abbott Vascular um, and also uh, consulting fees and advisory board for uh, some of the ten companies as uh, listed on this slide. So in terms of treatment options for patients with coronary artery disease, uh, we have uh, a couple of options. One is optimal medical therapy, um, uh, coronary artery bypass graft surgery, or uh, percutaneous coronary interventions. In terms of what these therapies target, um, uh, these are kind of uh, different. For example, optimal medical therapy targets significant as well as non-significant lesions, but as uh, cabbage targets significant uh, and also some non-significant lesions. So in, in the first 50 millimeter segment of the coronary tree, which is bypassed, even if there is a non-significant stenosis, the, the bypass graft affords uh, protection against future rupture of that non-significant lesion. But as if you look at PCI, it only targets significant uh, lesion in the segment that was actually stented. Of course, uh, there are other things to consider in terms of these therapies and um, in terms of optimal medical therapy, as we discussed in terms of what it targets, but uh, you know, so there are a number of uh, different therapy options uh, for these uh, group of uh, uh, patients with coronary artery disease and over the last three decades or so, the number of medications available for treatment of uh, um, patients with CAD has grown exponentially targeting uh, different pathways. In terms of uh, cabbage, as we talked, it's um, a discussed target significant and also some non-significant uh, lesions. And of course, the surgeons would uh, tell you that the lima kind of, uh, you know, um, is a great uh, conduit. And you know, uh, here, as you can see, it's outside by uh, the patient. For PCI, as we discussed, it only targets significant lesions. And uh, as such, it's important to recognize that PCI without optimal medical therapy is as if your uh, patch treating a rather systemic uh, condition. So there are important trade-offs to uh, remember and recognize in terms of uh, these uh, three different uh, therapies um, in the sense that optimal medical therapy um, is dependent uh, largely on medication compliance. And of course, uh, there are a number of uh, adverse uh, side effects from uh, many of these uh, medications. Cabbage is invasive for most parts, and PCI, uh, although is uh, somewhat invasive, is a lot less invasive than bypass surgery. Um, and so there are important trade-offs to, uh, to be uh, recognized uh, in terms of uh, these uh, treatment modalities. So in terms of patients with multivessel coronary artery disease, there have been a number of clinical trials which have had, uh, tried to uh, address the question of whether PCI or cabbage should be ideal for those uh, group of patients. This is data from the Freedom trial, a 1900 diabetic patient with multivessel disease randomized to PCI cabbage. And in this trial, PCI cabbage was associated with significant reduction in primary composite endpoint, driven by a reduction in death, a reduction in MI, but um, a significant increase in stroke. Uh, but uh, of note to remember in the Freedom trial, PCI was done using first generation regulating stents, mainly the cipher and the taxi stent. So in terms of potential advantages of cabbage, uh, these uh, advantages are uh, all uh, long-term. A uh, number of trials have consistently shown a reduction in repeat revascularization with cabbage when compared to PCI. A few of the trials have shown a reduction in MI, and uh, even few trials have shown a reduction in death with cabbage when compared to uh, PCI. But of course, there are potential disadvantages of cabbage, and these are mainly related to short-term increased risk. And uh, these short-term increased risk are increasing the risk of very procedural events, increase in death, MI, stroke, renal failure, uh, bleeding, knee transfusion, infection, prolonged intubation, and prolonged recovery time. So in, in terms of the gap between PCI and cabbage, the way we can look at this gap is uh, in two folds. One is uh, because of stent-related events. The stent itself uh, can lead to restenosis, and thrombosis, and neoatherosclerosis, all of which are known to increase the risk of death or MI. And with PCI, since we are not uh, stenting the non-significant region, the non-significant region can uh, lead to plaque rupture, which can lead to death or MI. So the question is, how can one bridge the gap between PCI and cabbage? Uh, 
So first, of course, I mean, there has been significant progress in uh, PCI technology with newer generation drug loading stents. And now we have ultra thin uh, uh, strut stents. Uh, so can the newer generation stents you know, bridge the gap between cabbage and PCI? So let's look at some of the data comparing cabbage versus newer generation stents. So this is an article we published a few years ago looking at Everolimus eluting stents versus bypass surgery for multivessel coronary artery disease. Uh, this is data from the New York State Angioplasty Registry. 18,000 propensity score match subjects, uh, um, half of them had triple vessel coronary artery disease. And uh, we looked at the outcomes of cabbage versus PCI using Everolimus eluting stents. And as you can see on the slide, at uh, four years of follow-up, there was no significant difference between PCI and cabbage with outcome of death. Uh, in fact, cabbage was associated with significant increase in the risk of stroke. Um, but, um, and if you look at myocardial infarction, uh, cabbage was associated with a reduction in the risk of uh, MI when compared to PCI, but this was uh, based on a completeness of EVAS. So in, in patients who were completely revascularized with PCI, there was no uh, difference in MI between PCI and cabbage. However, in patients who are incompletely revascularized, cabbage was associated with a reduction in MI when compared to PCI. But the key thing to uh, remember from this study is that there was no mortality benefit of cabbage when you compare cabbage with uh, PCI using newer generation stents. Uh, so that was observation study. What does a randomized trial tell us? Uh, so this is a meta-analysis of uh, three randomized trials of the cabbage versus second generation uh, drug loading stents. If you look at 30 days outcomes, at 30 day outcomes largely favor PCI. Um, upfront risk is lower, significant reduction in NACE as driven by numerical reduction in death, MI, and stroke with PCI when compared to uh, cabbage. What about long term outcomes? Again, if you look at long term outcomes, PCI and cabbage, PCI using second generation stents, again, no significant difference between PCI and cabbage for uh, composite outcome and also for death, MI, or stroke. So the key to recognize is even in randomized trials of PCI with second generation GS and cabbage, there's been no mortality benefit of uh, cabbage. What about uh, higher risk group of patients such as uh, those with uh, diabetes? Um, what does the data tell us? So if you look at the data from New York State Angioplasty Registry, we published this in CERC Cardiovascular uh, Intervention in 2015. Um, again, when you look at all-cause mortality, no difference between uh, cabbage and PA versus PCI using Everolimus loading stents. Uh, in terms of MI, MI favored uh, cabbage, but only in patients who are incompletely revascularized. If you look at the patients who are completely revascularized, no difference between PCI and cabbage for the endpoint of MI. Stroke, again, was uh, more with cabbage when compared to PCI, and repeat revascularization was more with uh, PCI when compared to uh, cabbage. But the bottom line is, even in diabetic patients, when you compare newer generation stents, no bird mortality benefit of uh, cabbage. So what about randomized trials uh, in diabetic patients? Uh, you know, we all know the results of the FREEDOM trial. Uh, the FREEDOM trial had a longer-term follow-up, the FREEDOM follow-on trial, uh, in which uh, close to half of the original cohort were followed longer term. And in, in this long-term analysis, there was a significant mortality benefit of cabbage when compared to PCI um, uh, in patients with uh, diabetes. But again, freedom was done using first-generation stents. But interestingly, uh, so the conclusion here could be the cabbage raised to lower mortality than PCI using first-generation stents. But this is not as clear because the more recently the syntaxis uh, results were published. Syntaxis um, is a longer term follow up of, of the 10 year follow up of the syntax trial. So the uh, 1689 out of the 1800 uh, patients randomized in syntax were followed long term. And as we can see on the slide, there was actually no difference between PCI using uh, the taxes and versus cabbage in the syntaxis uh, trial. And if you look at uh, the survival, for zero to five years and five to 10 years. Specifically, the landmark analysis from five to 10 years, you see that the curves have overlapped, no difference between PCI and cabbage um, in the syntaxis uh, trial for uh, overall uh, survival. And um, if you look at the diabetic uh, status, uh, so here, um, the test for interaction for diabetes status is not significant, suggesting that the outcomes between PCI and cabbage, at least for overall survival, is consistent and with no significant um, heterogeneity of uh, treatment effect based on diabetes uh, status. 
So uh, 10 years, no significant difference uh, exists uh, in death between PCI using first edition PES and uh, cabbage, even in patients with uh, diabetes. So other randomized trials, uh, looking at PCI versus cabbage. Uh, so this is the best trial, cabbage versus serolimus alluding stents. Of note, this trial was terminated early because of uh, uh, difficulty enrolling. Only half of the plant uh, sample size was uh, enrolled. Um, if you look at uh, com uh, a robust endpoints, such as death and myostroke, again, no significant difference between cabbage and newer generation drug eluting stents. No mortality benefit of cabbage. And if you look at the uh, impact of diabetes on this, um, if you look at the outcome of uh, death, uh, the interaction p value not significant, suggesting no impact of uh, diabetes for PCI versus cabbage over death. This is also true for death and my or stroke. The only difference seems to be driven by repeated vascularization, more repeated vascularization in the diabetic subset with PCI when compared to that of uh, cabbage. But the common theme seems to be that there's no mortality benefit of cabbage when compared to PCI using newer generation stents. Of course, I mean, there isn't a, uh, a randomized trial looking at PCI with the newer generation stents versus cabbage in patients with diabetes. We are we, are, we have just started a randomized trial called the Tuxedo 2 trial. I'm the co-chair of this trial. The, the trial is enrolling patients with the diabetes with multivessel coronary artery disease. We're going to randomize 1,800 um, patients one-to-one -to, -one to two different stent types. Uh, but the secondary objective of this trial is to compare, I mean, the inclusion criteria is going to be similar to that of the Freedom trial. The secondary objective is to compare the outcomes of this pooled uh, PCI groups to that of performance code uh, of the cabbage arm derived from the Freedom uh, trial. And this is going to provide long, uh, more um, insights into outcomes of uh, cabbage versus PCI in patients with diabetes and multivessel coronary artery disease. Now, uh, stepping back, if you do assume that the Freedom trial mortality benefit is, should be driving our results, um, uh, the decision as to whether to choose PCI or cabbage in patients with diabetes, uh, so if you look at the trials where there was a benefit of uh, survival benefit of cabbage versus PCI, so for example, the Freedom follow-on trial and even the Excel trial, the question we need to ask is, um, what does this mean in terms of um, actuarial uh, survival, extension of survival uh, for a particular patient? So this is data back in the day comparing cabbage versus no cabbage trial and looking at extension of uh, survival in months or 10 years. I mean, these trials were done when there was hardly any medical therapy back in the 70s and 80s. And what we see from these trials are, when you compare to no cabbage, cabbage extended survival for six months or 10 years. So if you follow patients for 10 years, the extension of survival is only uh, six months uh, in patients who underwent cabbage when compared to no cabbage. So uh, what, is, uh, well, what does this mean uh, based on data from the Freedom trial where we saw similar mortality difference? So it appears that if you do a, back of the envelope calculation compared to PCI, cabbage extends survival uh, by only three months at eight years follow-up in diabetic patients based on the data from the Freedom trial. So back in 30 years ago, uh, cabbage extended survival by six months at 10 years. If you look at a high-risk group of patients diabetic in the Freedom trial, the extension of survival is only three months at eight years of follow-up. And so the question is, what does these three months or eight years, I mean, or six months mean to a particular patient? So this is patient perception of longevity benefit. Um, interesting to note that the majority of patients have survival benefit longer than six months it needed to offset even the inconvenience of uh, daily medication, let alone uh, um, um, invasive procedures such as uh, coronary artery bypass grant surgery. Um, and also, it's important to recognize that the patient uh, perception of uh, risk versus benefit may be different than that of the physician perception. So this is a survey of 785 cardiovascular patients and uh, uh, clinical trialists as to what do they value um, in terms of uh, different outcomes. If you ask clinical trialists, and of course, the majority of them would say death is much more important than stroke. But if you were to ask patients, they would rate the stroke to be as important or more important than death. So it's very important to um, uh, individualize treatment decision based on patients' own perception of uh, relative importance of uh, different endpoints. So just going back to this algorithm, uh, gap between PCI and cabbage, how can we reduce this? So for stent-related events, as I've shown from a number of different studies that the newer generation DES and optimizing PCI mainly with uh, using... <laughs> 
uh, imaging guided PCI um, may be the best way to reduce these stent related events. And for non related stent related events, it's critically important to optimize medical therapy, whether it's patients with diabetes or uh, patients without diabetes. So choosing between PCI and cabbage, so you have to weigh the uh, short term risk of death and stroke with cabbage with um, risk of long term repeat revascularization with PCI. And of course, if you cannot uh, completely revascularize with PCI, there's also an increased risk of MI in patients with incomplete revascularization with PCI when compared to cabbage. So patient preference definitely matters. So in conclusion, um, evidence from observation studies and randomized trials show similar mortality between PCI and cabbage uh, when PCI is uh, optimized, especially using uh, second generation drug loading stents. Of course, in patients with diabetes, uh, the data is uh, limited, but again, it seems to point to the fact that the mortality benefit between PCI and cabbage uh, seen in older trials, such as freedom trial, may not be applicable when you um, uh, see uh, when you compare it with the newer generation of loading stents, and the tuxedo two trial will provide further insights. So I would say the decision between cabbage and PCI should be based on ability to completely revascularize with PCI. We should also weigh the short-term risk of death and stroke with cabbage with long-term benefit of reducing the risk of uh, repeat revascularization, and patient preference uh, really matters as to how best to manage uh, these uh, group of patients. Thank you for your attention.